Hello viewers, Daily Race B this week brings us to the Nürburgring Sprint Circuit in Group 3 cars. I think this is an interesting combination, quite fast cars around a fairly tight track. The top of the leaderboard is quite interesting at the moment. We've got the, the Lamborghini Huracan and the Ferrari. I, however, am going to go for the Mercedes for this first race. And in the Mercedes, I needed to work out a few things. First and foremost, how does this car feel around this circuit? But also, quite crucially, I needed to ascertain a breaking point for this hairpin, the one that divides the GP circuits from the sprint circuit. So that was perhaps a bit deep, but I'll be working out a bit more in the race. I was fairly concerned that this track would be a bit too twisty for a Group 3 car, but we're starting this one from last, 16th on the grid. I guess we'll find out right now if this is a good track for racing or not. Now at first glance the sprint circuit looks like a fairly tight and twisty track. We had it in Group 4 cars a few weeks ago. And now Group 3 cars, let's find out if it actually is any good. Into the first corner, always an overtaking opportunity, big braking zone. Ferrari on the left actually brakes really late, leaves loads of space. And so that was quite an easy overtake. And that's up into 15th. Then you have the uh, very long corners of this uh, first sector through the Mercedes-Benz Arena. And you're often going to see lots of cars side by side through this first sector. Trying to pick our way through. Nothing really opening just yet. Now the Mercedes in front has a bit of a moment. And I can't quite decide which side to go and go into the back of him. But then he leaves a lot of space here. And so once again we're going to take the invitation and move up a position. So the cars in front coming off the hairpin side by side into the long left and long right. And this right hander coming up, very important corner as it leads out onto the longest flat out section. And the big braking zone into the chicane. Now there's a Porsche, a couple of positions ahead. Very slow off the turn, getting a penalty I think. So this could get quite interesting here and I wasn't quite sure what to do up the inside of the Porsche but having to really check up here and I was just super careful to make sure I did not get a penalty which is really easy to do. And the Porsche here didn't, doesn't quite commit to the move, eventually gets it with the help of a little bump. And now a drag race against the Audi, not quite able to get past. So two positions gained on that first lap but we can definitely gain a few more here. Let's look in towards turn number one. I'm going to move to the right hand side. Can we pull off a move here against the Audi? They both move across slightly, but thankfully no contact. I think there was contact between them on the apex. But well, we're going to move up two positions. The double has been completed. And so we're going to move this forward a little bit to the end of lap two, catching back up to this Audi and Ferrari. And this moment occurred here, you know, the Audi just pushing the Icelandic driver a bit wide. This guy spinning out <laughs> seemingly on his own. And I was very aware that this Ferrari behind would be slightly annoyed. So I didn't really want to be in this position. I was in a bit of a sandwich here. So out of nowhere, the Ferrari comes back in for the somewhat expected ramming attempt. And well, he's only really succeeded in pushing himself off the track. But anyway, Moving on to the end of lap three, had to catch up with Jimster here. Has a bit of a moment through the chicane. That turned out to be a fairly easy overtake. And a couple of laps later, end of lap number five, catching up to this Porsche for P7. So we've actually managed to, you know, get a fair amount of overtakes done. Certainly not impossible to overtake around this track. Looking up the inside in towards the final corner, having to be really careful here to not push too wide. And the gearing of the Mercedes such that I don't really get the launch off that turn. I think if there's any weakness I noticed in this car is that the traction isn't the best. But this guy didn't really uh, defend into turn one, so this was quite an easy move, making sure we don't overcook the braking point. And that's uh, P7. With a bit of a gap to the guys in front, um, there was no really room to try and get P6, unfortunately. So it was very much a defensive race to the end. I had to uh, cover the inside here into the chicane. Still breaking on the 100 meter board, forcing the other car to the outside. Not much they can do there. And that was that pretty much. So overall, a good race. Enjoyed it. And we move forward. It's definitely one where you can overtake. But I do think we'll have to qualify and move forward on the grid to really have a proper race here. There we go, up to P7. I think the Mercedes wasn't the right car for that race, but it was a fun race nevertheless. 
I still think Mercedes can do some good things here, so I'm gonna stay with it, but I'm gonna qualify first. And here is my best qualifying lap. So after setting two laps here, I felt like I was getting in a good rhythm, a 127.6 on that second lap, but I knew I could go quicker. So let's take a look. Into the first corner, braking just before the 100 board, off the brakes, let the car roll, back to second for a bit more traction. And the traction was the one problem I was having with this car, and there's a fair amount of traction zones around here. On the exit, running the kerb as wide as possible to carry as much speed, trail braking in to this turn, and then carrying the speed through as much as possible. On the exit, of course, of turn four, you can run quite wide, and carry the speed. Looking for the 100 board, or just after the shadow of the bridge on the entry here, going straight in, being patient mid-corner, then back on the power to get a good exit, back over to the right quite quickly. And here, taking a lot of the curb on the left-hand side, and on the right-hander, just letting the car breathe on the entry before waiting get fully on the power, utilising the kerb on the exit, really maximising their track width. Then it's the fateful chicane. This is uh, something that can truly make or break your lap. Carrying the speed through, you can use third gear for stability. The second gear seemed okay there as well. Then into the final corner, it's about patience, getting the car pointed in the right direction. Second gear, you see they're squirming a little bit. Overall, it's going to be a good lap, a 127.0. 27-0, I think that was quite a good lap for this car, but I don't think it's going to put us right at the front, maybe in the mid-pack. Sixth on the grid, three-tenths away from pole. That's not bad. I think we can move forward from here. And that's the aim. Let's just try and move forward. P6, I mean, ideally, I just finished P6 because it's in my nature to finish there. But we're going to try and do better than that. Moving forward, let's see if we can do it. Now, the... Uh, top six was separated by three temps. That's pretty good. You know, it shows that the competition is quite close, quite fair. And I think around this track, you are going to get pretty close racing, given the nature of it. But let's take a look on the exit of the hairpin. Porsche with very good traction, as you'd probably expect from a Porsche. As we come through this left-hander, the Ferrari in front is going to continue turning left and go straight off onto the grass and surrender P2 going way down the order now. And this is where things could get interesting as we head round towards the chicane for the first time. The uh, Porsche there getting overtaken for P2. And I wasn't really able to go for that move. I mean, you could dive up the inside on the left, but I would have got ch uh, checked up by the cars in front and so probably would not have completed that move. It's the final corner. Interesting that the CCR driver here going defensive into the final turn. I don't think I was close enough to go for that move. But end of lap number one, one position gained with five laps remaining, P5 at the moment. And again, um, the guy in front going to go defensive, definitely wary that I'm somewhat close, although I would say that I was not close enough to go for that move. So we are going to try and find a move though at some point during this lap. I think I sense we are getting close now. And on the exit of turn two into three, putting, up, putting the nose up the inside, he actually drives quite wide. I'm going to go side by side through the exit of three into four. It's a good respect shown here. And I thankfully managed to get the traction on the exit. I'm going to have to cover the inside here to the hairpin. Unfortunately, the Lambo from P7, or P6 actually, comes flying in a bit hard on the brakes. And I'm shoved wide back down to P6. So all that work, I'm going to have to do it again. So that was um, a very costly moment, I think, in the race. And it's moments like that can, which can really decide your fate overall. So handy point here, going a little bit slow, okay, uh, getting into the gravel on the exit. I'm going to try this one around the outside. This is never going to be easy. And I know he's still there. Don't really want to go side by side through this chicane. Uh, he actually makes a hash of it on the exit. So we are actually able to complete that move. But yeah, a moment like that, and, you know, getting pushed wide on the hairpin. I would have been away there in fourth and potentially trying to catch up with the top three. But now we're fully embroiled in the battle, at least for P4, but if not for P5. So it just shows you one little moment. Completely change your fortunes in a race. Down into the, the hairpin, going slightly defensive as he was close. I wasn't quite sure if he was going to go for it. And then he's going to form the old switcheroo unfortunately that gives him the outside for turn two and he's not able to complete the move so this often happens you you get the overtake done but then you're going to have to perhaps 
drive a little bit defensive on the back foot for a couple of corners at least to fully establish your gap which I managed to do and this is lap number four now you see catching back up with this battle for p2 so I knew I had the pace the pace was actually pretty good and this lap I felt quite comfortable with a slight help of the slipstream from the car in front this is actually going to be the faster lap of the race so far a 1 minute 27.4 which is okay for this car but you'll notice the fastest drivers getting into the 126s um, but 127 a low 127 is a solid race pace I would say around here especially in the uh, Mercedes which isn't really the meta for this race into the chicane we're going to try and get this position back cleanly I know you kind of nerfed me wide earlier but going to try and get it done cleanly into the final corner final lap not quite able to get it done tried my hardest but ultimately at the end of this one a very close race indeed it is going to be a p5 i wanted to try to get back past that lambo cleanly but couldn't quite do it it was a good good battle though it was a good fight he says sorry for the nudge as you can see on my left there but it is what it is okay guys we're going to jump into the ferrari now let's see how that goes need to actually buy the car first here it is and then of course we've got to add a beautiful livery to the car this livery must be worth half a second minimum and it became very apparent that indeed it was worth half a second because as i jumped into this practice session and it's always worth doing a practice session to learn the characteristics of the car it became quite apparent very quickly that this car was a lot better than the mercedes Oh, this car feels a lot more stable on corner exit. The Mercedes definitely didn't have good traction. And there are quite a few traction zones on this track. <laughs> I think I may have spoken a bit too soon there. But with that done and dusted, we move into the start of the next race, the third race and we're starting in third but we're going to move initially up into second as the guy in second drives really wide on the first corner we're going to take the shorter route the shorter line bit of contact on the exit but that is going to be second place claimed and now we can turn our attention to the leader can we get the lead of the race for the first time in the session and turn our fortunes into something resembling a victory into the hairpin then not really the best overtaking opportunity unless you're already alongside given the nature of that turn where you're jumping in straight to the apex it's quite hard to outbreak someone there now the leader is going to go quite wide here and this is going to cause a bit of a moment as we turn into this right hander there is contact between us and he eventually ends up uh, spinning out on the grass you may have seen that in the back of the shot we'll take a look at the replay of that after the race but for now I'm going to have to defend against this other Ferrari fully to the inside then just covering that side off to make sure they can only go the long way around. Eventually backing off as we head in towards the final corner. Got, a, got enough of a gap here to not have to defend this time around. But on the exit I know that this is going to be a close race and that tended to be the nature I suppose as this is a sprint circuit and you're in group 3 cars the, the lap times are quite short and therefore the qualifying times are going to be quite close and therefore I think people are going to be fairly well matched on ability and what that seemed to do for this race is make it a very very close one indeed as this one was into the first corner you see here he's very close indeed half looking for it and I'm aware of that on the radar that he's closing up slightly on the brakes into turn one end of lap number three actually no halfway through lap number three I managed to edge out a bit of a gap into the hairpin going purple here although that's only against a 27 a mid 27 which uh, we can definitely go quicker than into the chicane end of lap number three definitely make a bit of a mistake applying the throttle a bit too quickly a bit too haphazardly and the car wanting to slide off to the left which would not have been ideal so having to arrest the slide and lose some crucial momentum he performs a very nice old switcheroo i was trying to prevent that from happening but he's done a good job so he's on my inside at least partially so this will be a very interesting turn number one i'm trying to ra run him a little bit narrow but as we head into uh, the first corner i'm able to run around the outside and thankfully keep the left hand side for turn number two and restore the position 
So that was quite a close call. And into turn number three, heading towards the apex a little bit wide. So a bit, bit of the pressure now creeping in. This guy very much uh, asking many questions of me. Having to move to the right-hand side here to go defensive. To not give him the inside line. Make sure we don't overshoot. He's on the left. Not much you can do around the outside other than set off and try and get a better exit. And here, he went for the inside and I tried to turn in. I had to turn back out. I didn't really realise until the last second that he was going for that move. Um, but it settles back in for the back uh, straight here. This is going to, once again, be very close indeed. I think the textbook way to defend it is just to move to the left and fully wait until they move over to the right before then moving back across slightly to take a better angle for the corner. And uh, we've done another successful defence. So this, ver uh, this race very much a different dynamic of having to defend rather than catch up and attack. And um, there are quite a lot of corners where you, to, where you do have to position yourself correctly if a car is right on your tail. Bit of a gap established there at the end of lap number four, start of five. And at the end of five, you can see I had a really good lap. I think you might have got dirty tyres, which really affects you back quite badly around here. Ultimately, we're going to do Ferrari in Italy very proud and come round to win the race. Whew. That was a tough win. That was a tough race. He raced me really good there. I had to really defend and work for that. That was Ferrari first and second. Something you definitely won't see in F1. Now, I wanted to see what this incident looked like on the replay. So this is what happened on lap number one. And we made contact into this right-hander. And I felt like I left space. And I think it's a bit more interesting watching it from his POV. He got dirty tyres there, tried to turn in. I think he just turned in slightly too late. So I think ultimately a racing incident there. But now it was time to qualify in the Ferrari. 27-0 sets in the Mercedes, but in the Ferrari, I feel like we can go quicker. I think this car is better suited to this track. Braking late, carrying the speed in, second gear getting good traction on the exit this left hand is all about rotation and trying to manage the slide of the car if you get that quite right in third gear you see there you get the application of the power dead right and the car slides really nicely out of the corner and you're getting rotation and acceleration at the same time so if you can manage that if you can harness that power of rotation and power at the same time then this car is truly fast around this track into the hairpin, coasting mid corner before coming back out for a nice exit. Back over to the right again, trying to take over this curb on the left, minimize the track distance. And here again, listen, quite a long coast to get the car to turn and rotate before getting back on the power as early as possible for this back straight. 56.6 sector there, which is pretty good. Into the chicane again, this is just about carrying speed and maximizing the track limits as much as possible and they're getting on the power as early as, as you can on the exit. In third gear, to get slightly better traction, and into the final corner, again, patience. But in this car, you can be a little bit less patient because it has very good traction. And that's gonna be a 126.6, which is a lap I was very happy with. And as I jumped into the next race, please don't tell me I'm the only person who has done this. I'm on my phone waiting for the next race. And yes, you guessed it, I missed it by one second. What a truly soul-destroying moment. I had to wait an extra 20 minutes for the next race, which was the longest 20 minutes of my life. And for this race, I started on pole. I think a 126.6, fairly decent time. There are quicker people than that, obviously. But it will certainly put you at least towards the front of the pack. Now, from pole, main objective really on lap one is to try to resist that overtake on turn one. It didn't really come, so that was fine. But then, apart from that then, it's just to try and drive a quick lap and get away from the pack behind. Now, the guy behind was quick, and he has been in the video so far, and he's been at the front, so I know how good he was. But it's a case of almost forgetting that he's there. I've got no one in front of me, so all I need to focus on is just lapping this car, this Ferrari, around Nürburgring sprint circuit as fast as possible. 
and then hopefully all the things should fall into place and you win the race. Simple as that really, isn't it? Um, except it isn't. On the exit of here, we can take a look back and I don't know why this game does this. He actually turned into the sun for a, for a brief second there. And um, with all that astrophysics going on behind, it was actually an easy um, couple of laps here. You see they're all in the uh, 127s, in the mid 127s. So I was nice and consistent. He actually fell back. I was actually five and a half seconds in the lead by this point. And things were looking nice and comfortable. And I'm not going to say this is where my race unraveled because it didn't. It actually got better. Harnessing, once again, that beautiful rotation through the uh, long right onto the back straight. One of the most important corners, I'd say, on the on the lap to get the power correct. A 127.0, that's the fastest lap I've done in the race, in any race so far. And eventually coming across the line to claim another victory for Ferrari. Doing something the Ferrari F1 drivers simply cannot do. I'm really pleased with that. That was nice and consistent. Every lap in the 127s, almost got a 126 there. Once you can get that rotation on this Ferrari, it's a really good car. I think that's why the Lambo and the Ferrari are good around this track. There's lots of tight corners, lots of rotation, uh, lots of traction zones as well. So that's why those cars are doing well. I just want to say at the end of this video that I do have intentions of coming back to streaming. It's something I've been thinking about for a couple of months. Just trying to make sure everything works though this time around and that i don't stop so that's something to look forward to i know a lot of you want the streaming to come back in the meantime though have an amazing day i'll catch you next time goodbye